this right back, Charlie. Oh, 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 People eluded, I'm back yeah. again. Come on, Ian. <laughs>
really is where we've been playing our best football. And, you know, when frustratingly, when we play teams who also counter-attack or sit deep, we, we struggle a little bit. We, we're not brilliant with the ball or, you know, creating things and making things happen as such. But when big teams like yourselves or like, you know, City, United or whatever come to Molyneux and we allow them the ball, counter-attack is where, you know, we can punish teams. So that's why I'd be intrigued. I think that's how we'll play Saturday. I think we'll sit deep, allow Arsenal a lot of the ball and then rely on the, either the wing-backs or the likes of Cunha who should be starting to, you know, drive the ball forward and try and get in behind. I mean, you know, again, I'm quite scared of the game because we've lost to, obviously, we've lost to Aston Villa in the Prem. We've lost to uh, Bayern Munich. We're kind of struggling yeah. with fitness over players. There's a lot of minutes in the legs. As I said, I rate Gary O'Neill quite highly. And when I think of Wolves of this season, I think of, I can never pronounce his name, but El Nori, Jao, uh, yeah. Jao Gomez, I believe. Obviously, Pedro Neto, I think, is injured. But you've got some very attractive players. Cunha, as you mentioned. So I'm expecting you lot to really go at us and have a go. What are you expecting from the game? Yeah, I think, I think I'm hoping so. But frustratingly, we've had sort of fitness issues of our own. And then we've got, we've actually got three home games on the bounce now. You, Bournemouth and Luton. And it, it's interesting to see, you know, I think this is the toughest of the three, but still Bournemouth have been, had a good spell this season. Luton are still fighting for their lives. So n not none of them are going to be easy. So I will be intrigued to see how Gary O'Neill manages minutes and who he gives starts to. I think Cunha will start. Eight Nori is, you know, a doubt because um, he was out injured last week. I'm hoping he's back because he's been fantastic, you know, going forward, been playing a slightly more advanced role. Um, but we, we have got quality there, just our front line, you know, we, we're down to the bare bones, really. So, um, I, I, I expect Arsenal to go and win this match just ultimately because that's how good they've been this season. And you look, you know, 90% of the games they go and, and win, you know, naturally. Um, but part of me thinks if if this Arsenal team turn up at to Molyneux and they're still re very fragile and licking their wounds, you know, Wolves have got an opportunity. And ultimately, if Wolves go and get three points, it kills pretty much kills the title race. So um, it, it could go one of two ways. Arsenal could come out and think, right, we need to, you know, let's get this season back on track. Or like I said earlier, just, just fall apart. So it could be a long evening for Wolves or a very exciting evening for us fans at Molyneux. And that's what I'm expecting, really. I'm expecting it to be one of those typical English games. All the fans from both sets of uh, sets of teams all out there making noise and the 12th man really playing a factor. For me as an Arsenal fan, we haven't got time to feel sorry for ourselves. There's every mm. reason to, as you said, be licking our wounds, but we cannot perform like that. As you said there, and I don't think you're being dramatic, if we don't get three points, the title race is over. We've seen City out the league, out the Champions League. Sorry, we're out the Champions League. We're kind of chasing the pack with Liverpool and City, so we, we need to win three points. We need to mm. win and we need to get three points in these six games left. So it's going to be difficult. What sort of weaknesses are in the Wolves side? Um, I think sometimes just lack, you know, lack of concentration. I think at the moment, the, the, the back five, I like the wing backs, but the the, the three centre-backs at the moment have still raising a few question marks. I mean, Max Kilman is a player who a lot of, a lot of fans seem to, to rate quite highly. And I think... Um, he has had some good games, one of his more solid seasons at Wolves. But without Craig Dawson, who's probably going to be injured as well, without Craig Dawson, he's almost not got that leader next to him. Um, so the last few weeks, he struggled a little bit, Max Kilman. And I think the lapses of concentration or the silly clearances or poor passes, you know, we give away possession quite quite easily sometimes in, the, in, in our own final third. So... Um, I think the back three really there to, to, to be got at is sometimes they can be pulled out of position quite easily. And I think if Arsenal attack like the way they attacked at the Emirates in the first half, last time we played you, you know, we could have some trouble. Saar as well. <laughs> Just don't know which Jose Saar is going to turn up. Some games he's absolutely brilliant. And other games like last weekend against uh, the weekend before against West Ham, he conceded directly from a corner. So you just don't know which, which Jose Saar is going to turn up as well. So... I think everywhere else. I mean, Jao Gomez and Mario Lamina are, you know, solid players. And I think the midfield battle is going to be really interesting on Saturday. And then the attack as well for Wolves. Pablo Sarabi or another that, one of those players that's hot and cold. When he's on it, he's a very good footballer. And, you know, you're not surprised to see him in the Spain setup. But in the other games, you're thinking, you know, what's this guy doing? So just just consistency. And ultimately, that's probably why they play for Wolves and not for Arsenal because of that you know, lack of consistency as football players. But um it really, really intrigues me. I love games at Molyneux under lights because you normally see Wolves really up for it and go for it. But this one, I don't know, a little bit later, Arsenal fans will be up for it. Wolves fans will be up for it. I'm, I'm, I'm just interested to see what will happen. Do you think it's the best time for you lot to play Arsenal? Um, 
I don't think it's ever a good time to play Arsenal because of how good you guys are. But like I said, I don't, I, I really don't know because it, it, like, like we've already said, Arsenal ultimately are in the title race still. Although it, some fans may not feel like it is, but I still genuinely think all it takes is City to drop points in one game, and you guys are straight Suddenly back in it. Things change, yeah. 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 And I know you've got some tough fixtures, but ultimately you've you've played well against the big teams this season as well. So I don't know. I don't think it's ever a good time to play Arsenal. And I've, I've got a feeling Arteta won't let you guys, you know, sit back. I think they'll they'll be up for it. And games like this, I think we played um, we played you guys twice in the evening games a couple of years ago, and that ultimately ended our season because we fell apart. We, I think you. It's so when Martinelli got the two bookings you know, in in the same passage of play. I don't know if you remember yeah. that a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was crazy. I, I don't know if you. I think you just about beat us that game, and then a few weeks later we played you at the Emirates, and again late two late goals, and you beat us. And the Arsenal fans are really up for it then. And sometimes Wolves fans don't like it when when opposition fans give it back. But Arsenal fans sometimes when you're up for it are some of the best that come to Molyneux. So if they are up for it Saturday, I think the atmosphere could be brilliant as well. That's the thing that makes me nervous, man. I think the fans, you know, as I said, typical British kind of game. I'm quite nervous about Gary O'Neill because I rate him highly. I think he's got a potential spanner in the works. I definitely yeah. feel you lot have a lot of threats that you could pose to us in an attacking sense. I think we've been one of the best teams defensively in the Prem, but we still have this. I know it's never a good time to concede any goal and every goal you concede is a poor goal, but... We have conceded some poor goals and of recent, you look at the two against Villa and the goals we've conceded against Bayern Munich, they've been silly goals. And I think we're a bit wounded. I hope Arteta doesn't feel like that and I hope the players yeah. don't. But at the same time, it feels a bit weird. I think, you know, everybody knows Arsenal have this bit of an April curse. Our defeats are never, it's never just one defeat and then we get back to it. Last season was an anomaly. Our kind of poor results or lack of points, it kind of comes in, in bunches, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that could happen now. And as you said there, all it takes for City to drop points and we're back in it. We've got six games and I do feel like we're a bit of a wounded animal. To hear you say that you play a back three, it's making me think, well, how do we deploy it? Because I feel Gabriel Jesus would start for me because we've got a lot of as you know we've been playing a lot of games there's a lot of minutes we've got a thin squad but I am kind of thinking does Kai Havertz go up front now I would like Martinelli to start I'm I'm happy you mentioned the counter-attack because I am very nervous of you lot on the transition because you lot have pace. I'm not too yeah. much worried about the left-hand side, so all right, I'm kind of worried about the left because I don't know if Tommy Asu will start. I don't know if Kirio's got a bit of ring rust and I just have a feeling that Arteta will do one of them games where he's kind of being complicated and he might play Zinchenko. Now, obviously, he gives you a lot in midfield and in the final third, but going backwards... He can be got at. And if you're Gary O'Neill, not to say my team is the best thing since sliced bread, but if we named Arsenal's strongest team from last season, which had Zinchenko, naturally every manager is going to target Zinchenko and try yeah. and get him, either the space he leaves or his inabilities defensively. So it'd be a bit of an interesting game, man. What have you made of Wolves' season in terms of accomplishing what you'd like to accomplish? Like, what was the targets in August and where are you on course to do now? I think sure, it's really European places. Yeah, I mean, I think it's still a little bit too far for the remainder of this season. We we played West Ham a few weeks ago. And even at, at that time before that game, people were saying, after the FA Cup exit, which I'll talk about in a sec, after that, everyone was like, well, that season's done now. We've got nothing else to achieve. Because there were, you know, we still had Brighton, Chelsea, Newcastle, a lot of good quality teams, like still chasing the same mm. you know, goals as us. But then we played West Ham and... We were only three points behind them. They were sat in seventh. We were three points behind them. Had a better goal difference and a game in hand. For if we beat them, we could go up to seventh or eighth. Game in hand of them. We're in a great position. And frustratingly, we lost that game. Uh, we conceded. Um, we conceded directly from a corner, which I said is a stupid penalty. But then we had a VAR disallow a goal right at the death, 97th, 98th minute, which was just absolutely ridiculous. And Gary yeah, O'Neill got in a bit of trouble. Yeah, a bit of trouble about that. Um, but yeah, the, I think the goal ultimately at the start of the season was Gary O'Neill was told to keep Wolves in the Premier League. And a, a, a lot of neutral fans and even a lot of Wolves fans were saying, ah, we're done. You know, you can't. A Gary O'Neill, very little experience coming into this squad who's just all over the place. But I still had a feeling, I, I thought on paper, our squad, we're better than Forest, we're better than Luton, we're better than Sheffield United, you're better than Burnley. Like, you know, you know there shouldn't be anything to worry about, really. And ultimately, you know, Hasn't Gary been. Neal's, yeah, he's let the football do the talking. He, like I said earlier, got doubles over the Chelsea Spurs, beating City um, at Molyneux. You know, we've had a really, really some good result. So, yeah, that that the, the goal for the end, end uh, rest of the season. I don't think European football is. I think it's too far away now. But to finish as high as we can, if we can get a top finish, 
finish like ninth or tenth, especially after what was predicted at the start of the season. I think that is a very, very good campaign for Gary O'Neill. And I think he'll have suitors in the summer, whether that is, I know it's maybe a bit of a sideways step, someone like West Ham, um, although it's a lot closer to his home, he's a previous player there, or even, again, a bit of a stretch, but maybe even the England job, it might be a bit too early for he's him. definitely but a Gareth candidate, man. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think it'd probably be your Graham Potter's already how, or if England go foreign, I don't know. But um, I think I think he'll be in the conversation for sure. And it's hard to turn that down anyway. You couldn't begrudge him for turning it down. As I no. said, I rate him. When I've seen him link with England, when I've seen him link with United, I yeah. don't know if I, if I was him, if I'd make the West Ham move. I get it. You're a former yeah. player. London aspect might have a bit more money to spend, but it just seems like, you know, I know you said your season kind of started kind of horribly, but it just seems like everybody connected to Wolves is slightly more aligned with what they want to do exactly. than West Ham. So I don't think it makes sense. And I just feel there's something underrated about stability. Like, I think he's done really well at Wolves. I think he's got really impressionable players. When I hear, like, Cunha, the couple of players, really, but Cunha, when they speak about him and how he improves him and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. in a weird way, it reminds me of Mikel Arteta when he's kind of opening these players' eyes. What would you say is the biggest strength and weakness of your Wolves side under Gary O'Neill then? I think the ability to actually, although it's not, you know, it's not loads and loads of goals, but our ability to score goals under Gary O'Neill is uh, surprising, but in, you know, in, in a good way. Uh, under Last season under Nuno, really, really struggled. Bruno Large couldn't get a scoring, even under Lopetegui, really struggled to get, a, you know, scoring on a consistent basis. Um, so Gary O'Neill has come in and ultimately we haven't even signed an, an, another striker. You know, we had Fabio Silva and Sasha Kalajic at the start of the season. Neither of those were getting a look in. We've relied on Cunha as a number nine. But, our, you know, we've already bettered our goal scoring um, for all of those seasons. And we've still got a stretch, of, you know, stretch of this season left. So, goal scoring has been fantastic. Um, there's been a lot more positives and negatives. I think in terms of atmosphere, the team spirit, the feeling, a connection between the fans and the players. We lost that with COVID. You know, under Nuno, it was unbelievable. With COVID, we lost that. Bruno Large couldn't Naturally, really get yeah. it back. Bruno Large couldn't get it back. Lopetegui sort of had it, but because he was a little bit of a, I don't know, he used to moan a lot about things. So although you felt something in the ground, by the time you were home, you were like drained by just the pure negativity that, you know, there, there was yeah. sometimes there. Um, so I, I can't really see there being many negatives. I think it's more, not so much of Gary, you know, more of the club. I think the club, should have invested in him a lot more in 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 January. I think he was quite critical just, on that. To be fair, yeah, exactly. But I've had conversations with the the, the sort of director of football at, at Wolves. Um, like quite lucky to have like an open dialogue with him, and he said he's quite disappointed that the club didn't give them the funds as as a duo, give them the funds to at least bring one player in, like a striker was they? the main one. I don't know. I I I I, I think. Obviously, when we first came into the Premier League, they're spending a lot of money in the Championship. They did as well, but I think the club now have almost sudden sort of changed stance, and they want to be self-sustainable. So basically, a sell to buy or you know, you know, model, which is fair enough. I think everyone is looking towards the Brightons and thinking, well, if they yeah. can do it, why can't we? So frustratingly, that 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 held us back. I do think if we had another forward in, whether that be Brozier, who was linked, or whoever else. We'll sell you Wolves. in the NK for 40 mil if you want. Yeah. <laughs> but even like the game against Coventry, we played, we weren't great, but we had an 18, 19 year old kid up front who played two senior games in his career. So if we had up. a proper number nine there, we could be having a different conversation. Wolves could be seventh place in the league and we could be in the FA Cup semi final this weekend. So it's just little if buts and maybes, things like that, which is frustrating. Um, I'm quite glass half full. I always look towards the positives rather than negatives. So I try and leave Naturally. that. Yeah, behind, but there are a lot of fans quite vocal about the lack of investment and why they haven't backed Gary O'Neill. And if Gary O'Neill was to walk, I don't think he would, but if he was to walk this summer and join someone else, everyone will be critical towards the board and, and that will be the reason why lack of investment. I mean, that kind of ties it up to what I wanted to ask you. Obviously, you mentioned sell to buy or that sort of change in regime. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that. That's why I'm, it's a pleasure that you're on the platform. You yeah. know, a couple of your players have been linked with moves away. The first one is, obviously, you've probably every day is probably linked with a club. Pedro Neto. What what, what do you make of him? Do you think it's his last season? I think his, his season's actually done with injury, right? But I was I was impressed with him. He could play on the right, play on the left, actually play as a false nine. I feel until his injury or the early parts of the season, he was a contender for team of the season, if I'm honest. But yeah, yeah where, where, where's your thoughts? With, with him see with Neto it, it's so frustrating because probably the last three pre-seasons he'd been the best player by far in the summer and then he was linked with Arsenal a couple of years ago and 
started the season quite strongly and then got injured and was out for a long time until the new year. This season, again, unbelievable in pre-season. Kicked on quite well um, with Gary with Gary O'Neill. I think he was top of the assist charts for yeah, a long time. Sick, um, then got injured. I think he pulled up against Newcastle and we drew that game. Could have easily gone on to win it, I think, if he was fit for the rest of the game. And he was out till the new year. And I think even in the new year, he was still top assist. Like, that's how good a start he had to the campaign. Came back for a little while, pulled up again within like two or three games. So you think flipping it. So they're saying they're trying to get him back before the end of the season. So he's back on the grass now. So he might be back for the last two or three games, but two of those three games are against City and Liverpool, Oof. which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing because he ultimately is going to want to be in the Portugal squad for the Euros. And I think that's why he'll try his best to be back for then. Um, but ultimately, because of his injuries, that's held back the amount of money that Wolves can demand for him. I think, like you were saying earlier, if he continued with the form that he was in, you can start to look at the 60, 70, even 80 million pound mark. But because of the injuries, you straight back down to like 40-ish million. I, I, If I was director of football at Wolves and someone offered me on, and put 40 million pound on the table, I would strongly consider it. Not because I think it's... I'd do it. I think, yeah, yeah. I think the thing is with Neto, although I think you can replace him for 40 million, not necessarily with a player of the same or better quality, but you'll get a player that's available for 90, 95% of the season. And I think with Wolves, like I was saying earlier, with him being out for this stretch of games, the last, what, six, seven, eight weeks, if we had a player that was available, Wolves would be in a completely different position. We'd be higher in the table. We'd probably be in the semi-final of the FA Cup. But because of that, He's like almost like a luxury player. Like it's great to have him, but all you know, ultimately, you're not you know, available. If if you were top four, top six team, you think, oh, Grealish is injured. It's all right. We've got Doku on the bench or whatever. Wolves haven't got that luxury. Haven't so, got that luxury, yeah. Yeah. So I would cash in on him this summer, and I, I hate to say it, but I probably would. But other players, Ryan Nori, I think will be one that spoke about quite That's a lot. That's another one. Let's let's speak about him. That's another one because we've been linked. Liverpool have been linked. That's another one I, I wanted to ask you about, man. Would you yeah. make up him? Do you think he could cut the mustard at a top six side? I think I think so. I think so. I think um, even City have been linked this week, and I think yeah. I saw a report about sixty million pounds. Now it sounds a lot, but eight Nori, I think he's only 22, 23. Already got four or five years of Premier League experience, which I'm, same with Neto, you know, he's 24, but been in the Premier League five years. Almost um, a veteran yeah. of sorts. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I, I, was, I was saying on another channel earlier on, I said, even with players like Cunha, I said, I think sometimes you take for granted that players are just going to move to a league and be absolutely brilliant. Whereas sometimes, especially if you're coming from abroad, it will take them six to 12 months before they're, they're settled and can play the, the Ready, football. Yeah. Yeah, so with Ain't Nori, you know, he's ready for that. There were and Lopetegui wanted to get rid of him. Lopetegui did not rate him at all. Um Lopetegui was ready to get rid of him and bring Aaron Creswell in from West Ham. Like That's crazy. It, it was mind blowing. So he went and it was a blessing in disguise, really. This season, Ain't Nori's been phenomenal. Just sh a player that is comfortable, happy where he is, happy with the playing time. Almost it's like Gary O'Neill's giving him the ball and say, You you do what Just you do what you best. Need to do. And defensively. I've never seen somebody lock up Mohamed Salah as often as he does. Salah does not get a sniff against Aiton Ori. The last twice I think they've played at Molyneux, Liverpool, or, or three times actually, because um, we beat them last season. Earlier this season, Salah didn't get a sniff. Aiton Ori came off. Salah gets an assist straight away and scores, I think, a goal. The year before, exactly the same thing. Aiton Ori, brilliant. Won the up, I think we were. Aiton Ori pulls up, has to go off, and Liverpool go and win the game 1-0 with Salah. Trailer, yeah. yeah, so... So so good defensively. We're going forward. I've no, I don't know. It's like this sort of Algerian style football. Like Mares is the same. Just on the ball, it's just like natural. It's just like they're the ball. all that kind of region. They're all blessed technically, and they're kind of like showmen. They all want the ball. They've all got a swagger with you know, it. Like on, the I, on soccer, AM, I, I haven't watched it for years. I used to do like um like little skill thing where like a compilation of two minutes. We just show all the skills from the weekend. Ryan Aitnori will be on that two or three times every single week. He'll do a ball roll, a 360 roulette, and elastico through someone's legs every every match. And you'll see on Saturday, we'll be like, oh yeah, Dave. Dave yeah, he's going to do that. someone. It, he'll, he'll do it. So yeah, I think I'd be worried if he went to City, although I think he'd be, do a good job there. I'd be worried that someone like Pep would almost train the flair out of Coach him. Because out of him yeah. yeah, exactly that. Whereas at Arsenal or... Um, I don't know, Liverpool, depending on who their manager is. Liverpool will be interesting because if they get Amarim in, I don't know if he would stick with a back five at Liverpool because that's how he plays sometimes at Sporting. But I think in a back five does does well because he has I've got the licence to bomb well. forward and, and he's got that, yeah, that um, protection behind him. But 
I think he's the best chance. Again, not that I want to sell him. He's the best chance for Wolves to recoup the most most money this summer. I think he's probably the most valuable player. Him alongside maybe Jao Gomez. Another who... one. I'm so happy you moved it on yeah. for that. That's another one I wanted to ask you about. Someone that I think he joined last year. I don't know him too religiously, yep. but when I've done my research and been watching Wolves games, I'm like, oh, he looks all right. I could see how, I think he's Brazilian. He could tie in at Arsenal with his age profile, etc. He's been linked with a few clubs. What do you make of him and what have you made of him, his impact so far? Yeah, so Jao Gomez is a good one because it's it's not the South American market isn't really a market the Wolves have gone into. Obviously, we're in the championship for such a long time, and then when Fosun came, and it was all George Mendes, it was all Portugal, or you know He's anything clients, to yeah. do with that. Uh, and we sort of come away from that a little bit more now. And the new head of uh, like head of recruitment director of football, Matt Hobbs, he's got a, a keen eye on South American. Like so, we were as you should. Enzo Enzo Fernandez, who's at Chelsea, we were we had an offer on the table. It was whilst he was at River Plate. This is before we went to Benfica. I had an offer on the table, and basically, I think he would have joined Wolves, but he wanted to stay at River Plate until the Copa Libertadores was finished. So basically, that was in the summer. We'd have to wait till the January to sign him, and Wolves said, "No, we're not interested." Copa Libertadores, they get knocked out, and Benfica go in and sign him straight away. Six months and later, the rest sold, of history, to for, yeah. sold to Chelsea for hundred million. So that's one that's. I had someone message me saying, "Why does everyone keep praising this Matt Hobbs? He, he fucked up the the um, Enzo deal." And I said, "No, it was the club that didn't want it. He he set it up. He said do it, it, and yeah. yeah, they let him down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now he's he kept keen on. So Jao Gomez is one similar sort of thing. We had a deal agreed with him, and then Leon came in last minute, and I think Leon are tied in with Flamengo. So Leon were like Flamengo were like, right, you're not going to Wolves, you're going to uh, Leon. But Jao Gomez ultimately." Gave his word to Wolves, but he wanted to play in the Premier League as Premier well. Premier League, yeah. So it was like a month-long thing in January. Like, this was really early January, and we didn't sign until, like, the last few days of the window. But oh, he yeah. came in, scored on his debut against Southampton last year. But again, Lopetegui, I think it's going back to what I said earlier, it takes a bit of time for them to bed in a, a new club. But Lopetegui that. wasn't a big fan of him. Didn't really give him many minutes. Gary O'Neill's trusted him a lot more. Bit for not. I think he's won the most tackles in the league. Yeah, he's an all action midfielder of sorts. I like Brilliant. him a lot, man. Brilliant. And he and he started to chip in with a few goals. I think he scored yeah. twice against Spurs as well. You'll be happy to hear. And, and yeah, you know, I always love game. you for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so again, again, like this is is it quite a it's not a new thing, I suppose, but defensive midfielders now are attracting a lot more money than probably what they used to do. But yeah, you look you know, at their rice is one. how much Roger uh, would go for as well. Exactly. Yeah. So I'd be interested. I, I would love to keep, and I think Wolves plan to keep him this summer but it's been interesting that they've, they've, quote, they've been quoted a couple of times at the club to say we don't want him to go but if he does we've got a list of play, players that we're, we're happy to replace him with so it'll be interesting and again fee wise you know signing for 15 million uh, about 18 months ago I think you could start so demanding 40, 50 plus million again which is unbelievable business towards and fans won't like it because we've never been used to it never should have been the same Ultimately, yeah, we made a nice profit on him. But at the time, I thought, right, we signed Nevis for 15 million. Next year, if we get 30, 40 million sound. But he stayed way longer than what we expected. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Um, we yeah. Wolves right. missed that chance. Adama, they missed that chance with when he was at his peak. We should have gone, yep, yeah, thank you very much. Because ultimately, you know, he left yeah, on a free. Yeah, did you have like 60, 70, maybe more bids or something from someone? I'm sure someone bid is something crazy for Adama once upon a time. I think they, the Wolves valued him at 70 million. And ultimately, I think with Adama, again, going back a luxury player, I think every manager in the world would love Adama Traore. But ultimately, he's not going to give you the output that for 60, 70 million, he's yeah. not going to give you, you know, 20 goals or 20 assists a season. So we missed the boat on that. Him and his injury, obviously, you know, speaks yeah, for itself. Yeah, so it's getting work. to the point now where Wolves need to be much, much cleverer in the market. And I think we'll see that a lot more this summer. I think you're bang on the money and I think mimicking Brighton, I know fans don't want to see it. And I definitely saw it in the early days at the Emirates when we had Cesc, Nasri, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, you get some good players and then you, it's like you get one or two then you kind of get three, four, and then you've got a decent bunch of players. And then every second, one or two, they're kind of pinched by other clubs and then you replace and then it gets a bit frustrating. But I think going back to what you said, where you made a brilliant point about Brighton, Brighton are at that stage. Now, of course, you can never kill players' ambition and they want to play for top clubs and do top things, but they've got stronger cash reserves to the point where they can actually hold on to players. And they've obviously got a great yeah. scouting network where they're sourcing players from all over. And I think with the players we've said there, that is great from you lot's perspective. You lot, I mean... If I was a Wolves fan, I wouldn't want us to sell El Nuri, Jao Gomez and Pedro Neto in one window. But that's bringing mm. in over a hundred million. And assuming you reinvest, it could be decent. If you had to say that out of the three, which one would you want to lose the least? Um... And also, which one would go for the most money, in your opinion? Bit of a twofold question. Yeah, it's a difficult one. I think 
I'd be happy out of the three. I'd probably be more comfortable in selling Neto just purely because of the availability thing. I think he's a fantastic player, but just availability wise, it's not just a one off this season, like every season we've had it. So I think in terms of availability, in terms of money, I don't know, Aiden Orr is an interest. I, I think Aiden Orr and Jao Gomez would command uh, and get you a very similar fee. I think you're looking sort of that round that 40 to 50 million mark. I know Walls have valued Aiden Orr at 60, but ultimately, you know, you're going to be buying a bit. Of shit, yeah. Um, so I don't know in terms of going, because I think Jao Gomez, I like a lot and he's got a lot more, you know, shows a lot of passion and so on. And he's probably more replaceable in terms of, I think you'll probably find another player, whether it be from South America or Europe, that can replace him and do a similar job. Um, whereas Aiton Ori is quite unique. I think although, you know, he's a left wing, left back, but he could play left wing back, left wing. He even played as like a false nine striker the other day and just creates chances wow. out of nothing. So I probably think I'd like to keep Aiton Ori the most out of the three. But it's close between him and Jao Gomez, I would say. It's interesting. I did imagine you'd say Pedro Neto purely because putting myself in a Wolves perspective, the injuries is one thing. And it's a thing where he's always linked with clubs. It's a bit like, for me, yeah. it's very different. But it's like when Cesc Fabregas went to Barcelona, it's like, it's been there for years. You've mentally made peace with it. It is what it is kind of thing. So it'd be interesting. Out of the three, the one I would want the most, it's an interesting one because if you asked me two months ago, it would have been Pedro Neto without a doubt. But I do yeah. like El Nori and obviously the highlights with Timber's injury, Tommy Asu's injuries, Zinchenko's inconsistencies, and obviously what you've said and his attacking flair. And I, I I love the inverted thing we're doing, but I miss kind of when we had fullbacks that were threats. I think Martinelli obviously on the left would benefit. So I'd probably say of the three... I mean, Jao Gomez, Brazilian. I got Brazilian bias and I need a midfielder. So I'm going to say Jao Gomez first, El Nori second, and Pedro yeah. Neto, not because of ability, just because arguably a winger is important, but I'd say him third. My last question before I let you get out of it then, what's the score predictions for Saturday? I got to talk positivity into existence. I've got two on Arsenal. Like, I, I've got two. I got one. My head is saying a two on Arsenal win, only because I think, like I said, 90% of the games Arsenal are going, going to go into his firm favourites. But my heart is saying that if Arsenal do come into this one quite fragile, we're going to nick it 1 0. Although and, and your goal scoring record against Wolves is like unbelievable in terms of like con consecutively scoring in games. So um, I'd be very surprised if we keep a clean sheet, but my heart is, is saying Wolves are going to nick it 1 0. It's a, it's a dangerous one because obviously we're, we've got a condensed fixture calendar list. We're coming off the lot of a lot of games. We've got you lot. So I expect there to be some sort of rotation purely because I could be wrong, but Tuesday, Wednesday, we've got Chelsea. So mm. it's an interesting period. Dave, let people know they can find you if I let you get out of here, man. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. No, as always, man. Uh, it's Come at on. Talking Walls everywhere. So I've got a preview and then my thoughts on the game afterwards as well on Saturday. But yeah, fingers crossed for you guys, man. I'm, I'm hoping that... Um, there's a few more twists and turns in the title race and it, yeah, it'd be nice to see someone else win the title as well, man. So best of luck for the rest of the season. I mean, I appreciate that, Dave, man. Bet right right back at you. I mean, in terms mm. of twists and turns, if it don't concern Arsenal, I'm dying of it wherever <laughs> clubs are concerned. But as the man said, people, follow Talking Wolves, find them on YouTube, Thanks, on Twitter and everything else. All the information will be in the bio. So give them a follow and may the best team win. Dave, it's always Cheers, a pleasure. Bro. Thank you for Thank being you, here. Man. Let me let you get out of here, my dude. Peace. Cheers, buddy. Thank you, Come man. on.